Let's go back to St. Thomas game. A great game, playoff type football all mm -hmm. the way around. You guys had the better of the, you know, statistics wise as far as time of possession, outscoring in the second half. Was it a matter of like big plays that decided that game? Yeah, you know, you look at that second half and it was a heavyweight slugfest. I mean, we'd give a bunch of punches and then one punch later, you know, they're in the end zone and um, it was just everybody leaving it on the field. It was a great football game for any any fan of college football that was at St. Thomas on Saturday. They had to go away really pleased. And, uh, and if they were a fan that was on the fence and really didn't, who, who cares who wins, they went away really pleased you know so but it was uh, it was a heartbreaker on our end obviously um, we felt that uh, you know the second half um, things were going really well for us we had a lot of huge plays and then you got to give credit to St. Thomas too they they also bounced back and made big plays of their own and and uh, it kind of came down to who's gonna have the ball last so unfortunately you know we have the interception with two minutes to go and then they ran the clock out, and um, yeah, that was a, that's a tough one. Uh, one thing we really haven't talked about this year, but was evident uh, on Saturday, is the play of your offensive line has been tremendous this year. Yeah. You guys racked up you know 300 yards, rushing yards, uh, and they were able to hold out, hold the line, and give Griffin some time to pass. Uh, talk a little bit about what they've done uh, well here in the past couple of weeks, especially Saturday. Yeah, and I thought second half especially, I thought we really started to, you know, kind of dominate that line of scrimmage. And, and this is really, this is a really good offensive line. And, you know, Dave Brown, our center, kind of, you know, gets everybody going in the right direction by what front they're in and what our calls are going to be. And, and we just, you know, we've got a physical presence with our kids and, you know, really, the four of the five are back too. You know that's uh, that's what's really nice. You know we've got um, we've got some key kids that are just stepping up, making plays. They're they're physical. They they see defenses really well and they run well. So you know that that, that bodes well for us with the running tech that we have. Uh, now let's jump ahead to Saturday. You host Gus Davis. Uh, first off, let's talk a little bit. It'll be the final game for the seniors. And the job that they've done, you have a chance to do something that's never been done before in the history of the Concordia program, and that's put back to three consecutive seasons of eight plus wins together. Uh, it's all on those seniors. Uh, plus, they've never lost a non-conference game. Nineteen seniors. What have they done for this program? Well, you can't say enough about them. I mean, these guys have just been, you know, warriors, and and really everywhere we've wanted them to be on the football field in the classroom you know the lifting and everything that goes into a championship team they've led by example and they've done just a super job you know we're going to certainly miss them um, but uh, there's still a lot of football to be played here and, and uh, you know we've got one for sure game in front of us and then see what happens after that and but um, yeah it's a great bunch of kids on top of all their football accolades I mean there are Every single one of them, they're even better people, and, and that's uh, that's what I'm most proud of. Now let's get to the game. Uh, you're going to face Gustavus, who is owns the best passing attack in the Mayak and one of the top five passing attacks in uh, the nation, led by the quarterback Mitch Hendricks, yeah. who you got to see in high school, recruited out of high school, yeah. and you've seen him develop here through the first three years of his career at Gustavus. What is, how has he changed since high school till now? Well, he... Yeah, we were recruiting him really hard out of high school, and we saw a lot of great things in him. We felt that he could run our offense, and, and I know he, he, he would be able to. And and uh, he's fit really well in Gustavus after having a year stint at St. John's and, and then transferring down to Gustavus. And I guess as I've seen him, you know, progress size-wise, he's about the same size still, you know, but you can just see his confidence. He's got a solid arm. He's got a really good receiving core, and uh, he just finds ways to get the ball into a playmaker's hands and, and he can create too. I mean he's got really good legs and he runs, he's competitive, he's a student of the game and you can just see, you know, a lot of his he, I mean he's checking once, checking twice, he's he's you know, reading his keys and he's a coach's kid, you know, this kid's a he's a grinder, he's a student of the game and I, I love the way he plays the game, you know, and, and I told him when when uh, he ended up deciding to go to Gustavus, I said, "Hey, I'm going to cheer you, cheer for you every weekend except for one, and uh, I sure hope it's uh, you know minus 20 and uh, windy and snowy uh, on Saturday." And uh, but he would love to have seen our practice last night with all the snow that was coming down. But 
anyway, he's a great kid. And he's got a wonderful family, and um, you know, he, he's done a great job down there. Now, how do you? Is it more important to get pressure on him from your defensive line, or is it more important for your defensive backs to get better coverage to make him, like you said, go to his second, third, fourth reads to give your defensive line more time? Yeah, I think it's a little combination of both. I mean, no question about it. We've we've got to be able to get to him and. Uh, keep them contained, and, and we need to be physical up front. We got to control that line of scrimmage. I mean, they got a really good running attack too. Uh, a lot of people, you know, they see there's two receivers leading the league and one and two in the conference in receiving, and yeah, they've just got blown away type stats. And uh, but they've got a solid running game too, and, and they mix it very very well. And they're a no huddle style offense, so. You know, I think the other piece of it that's gonna, uh, that needs to play a big part is our offense staying on the field. And what's going to be the key uh, offensively staying on the field? Is it going to be, uh, you know, being able to control the ground, ground game or is it being able to mix it? Uh, yeah, again there we've got to do both. We've got to do both really well. Um, you know, they, they're, very, um, they're a physical defense. They run extremely well. I've been impressed with the way they get to the football. And so we know we've got our work cut out for us. Um, but, you know, we are who we are. You know, we're going to run the football and, 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 and then mix in our pass to, and, and be two-dimensional and take what a defense gives us. And I think we, we've got enough athletes that were able to do that so if you take something away there's going to be something that you got to give up and it's just going to be a great matchup we're two evenly matched teams two teams could easily be undefeated right now so it should be a great college matchup good luck thank you